Perfect. Well, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Trevor Chuik. Uh, as Mark said, I'm based out of Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, I work with Paul Andriola at Small Cap Discoveries, doing some analyst work with Paul. Uh, the company we're putting out here today is called Beware Holdings. Uh, Beware trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the symbol BEW and on the OTC under BEWFF. Uh, we believe the company is a fast-growing SaaS business that has reached an inflection point. Uh, I also, you know, I'd like to highlight kind of how we found the idea. So Paul and I actually review CDAR filings every single day and every single night. Uh, so we routinely just, you know, review the Edgar equivalent of all the, the legal and financial filings. And this is one company that, uh, you know, piqued our interest with some of the financial metrics that uh, came up. <clears throat> So what is Beware? Beware is a mobile internet of things solutions company that designs and sells self-powered hardware with sensors and software applications. So the company was actually founded in 2014. They did go public in 2015 via an RTO. Uh, it's important to note that it was founded by Owen Moore and Chris Panzik. Owen Moore is the CEO, the co-founder of Gray, and, and previously he was the co-founder of a company called Gray Island Systems, which was sold in 2009 for $40 million. This was a, uh, a telematics company as well. Uh, so he's a single largest shareholder with about 8.75 million shares or about 9.9% of the company. The other co-founder is Chris Panzik. He's a COO. Uh, he's also been in the telematics industry since about 1998. And he was previously with BSM Wireless until uh, 2014. So he's your second uh, co-founder with about just also under 10% of the company. So again, these guys have a, a, a deep-seated, um, you know, just some deep-seated roots in telematics and uh, some experience uh, in, in the industry and, uh, you know, a previous sale of uh, another company in the space. So the, and the other company, Gray Island Systems, was a, a GPS business. So what does Beware do? So again, Beware has got an end-to-end -end IoT solution. So really think about slap and track. So when I mean slap and track, what these guys have is they've, they've got these low power uh, wide area network beacons. And these beacons basically sit out there on a, a number of different assets for, for their clients and customers. So think about, um, again, asset tracking solutions where you, know, you might be putting things on trailers, dry vans, pallet boxes, machinery, uh, and they actually even did some presidential uh, voting boxes in, in the most recent U.S. election. So that's one of their core markets. Their second uh, core market is uh, they're, they're focused on connected sensor solutions. So they're really remotely tracking uh, sensors information on non-powered fixed and movable assets. So, so when you think about smart cities and smart agriculture, uh, these guys have sensors out there that are, um, you know, gauging, uh, you know, humidity levels, temperature levels, light, uh, all sorts of different uh, sensors that, uh, you know, any of their customers or clients would be uh, looking for. And really the, the premise and, and uh, the overarching theme that they're trying to drive for their, for their clients is really the real-time location of inventory, containers, equipment, and tools. And it's all about cost-effective asset management and better return on investment for their clients. So just a quick little visualization. I think it's always helpful for people to understand what these products actually look like. Um, you know, it really looks like low technology and, you know, it arguably is. Um, so, you know, these guys have, um, you know, little products that sit out there. They're very rugged. Uh, they're, they're waterproof. Uh, they've got, you know, warranties on those waterproof things. Uh, long battery life. The batteries in these things last seven to eight years. And they're all working off uh, a Bluetooth uh, they're, they're all working on Bluetooth where the Bluetooth is transmitting that data. And then of course that data is, you know, passed through the gateway and then really piped, piped into uh, Beware's web portal, or if the customer already has their own software, uh, they're piped in via uh, an API integration. Um, it should be noted that these devices are, are relatively, uh, you know, inexpensive. They're sort of ranging from about uh, 35 uh, to $75. And then they, they actually capture a bit of a recurring revenue piece on the other side for about $1 to $3, dependent on uh, if it's Beware's uh, web portal or if it's a client uh, web, web portal. Uh, so again, some people have probably seen some RFID technology out there, and these guys are a bit of a competitor to that space. Uh, there's kind of, you know, an ongoing industry argument that uh, 
Um, you know, a company like Beware has a cheaper solution than RFID if, if you're tracking uh, some large, um, uh, you know, fixed assets and, and, and movable assets over a, a larger range. The opportunity, uh, the IoT space is obviously a, a big, big space. Uh, you know, Beware is a small player in that big space. Uh, the asset tracking solutions is expected to reach about 32 billion by 2024. Uh, the connected sensor solutions is expected to reach 22.5 billion by 2023. Uh, you can just think about the diversity in clients and, and applications for these types of products. Again, you know, putting them out there on portable toilets, flatbeds, generators, trailers. So you can think about all the different industries that they're serving, such as logistics, government, utilities, construction, oil, gas, and mining, as well as delivery and I think a big, um, you know, sort of bread and butter for this company is a lot of the trucking industry right now. So the business model, I think, I think it's important to highlight the business model for these guys uh, because there was certainly some investment risk uh, early on in, in the company, and, and it's you know core to the investment thesis why why I think it's worth looking at now. And the reason is is because uh, they've got a hardware and software combination, and they're the way they're penetrating the market was. Their focus was actually to sell the hardware at break even or even at a loss. So early on in the business cycle, uh, as they build inventory and sell product, they were going to be a cash uh, a cash losing business uh, in which they were. And what they've done is through the relationships in the telematic space, they've they've landed some big brand resellers. So they've been able to get in with Bell, uh, AT and T, T Mobile, Geotab, Fleet Complete. In fact, Bell uh, Bell is an investor in the company. Uh, they bought in their last financing. So, so they really leverage these partners to really market and sell the products on the behalf of Beware. So then Beware doesn't actually have to go spend, spend uh, you, you know, a lot of money doing sales and marketing to actually grow the business. So it allows for a little bit more scalability and a, a lower overhead business model. Company's got about 10 to 12 employees right now. And again, yeah, they're, they're selling the hardware and then they're capturing that long-term uh, recurring revenue on the software side. So, and Annually, how's the company been doing? So the company's grown since 2016 from arguably zero dollars in sales. Uh, 2020 was a record year. They did about seven million dollars in sales. Uh, gross profit for the year was uh, almost up uh, 100%, about 93% for the year. Most importantly, of course, those sales are going to have a, a bit of a mix, uh, a bit of a product mix in terms of hardware and software. So, uh, you know, the hardware is going to skew as they get different orders. Uh, you know, as you can see, it's not going to be a linear trend here. Um, but most importantly is the recurring revenue side of the business. And the recurring revenue, there's a very clear trend here. It's very actionable. Uh, it's pretty core to the investment thesis. Um, you know, uh, probably the strongest KPI. I think you can sort of blindly follow in some sense. Uh, and what we've seen here in, since 2017 is the recurring revenue has actually increased every single quarter for the company. Um, a little asterisk there at Q4 in 2020, a little bit of noise when the, when the quarterly financial or the annual financial came out because it looks like it's down. And while it technically is, uh, they, they operate here in Canada based out of Toronto, but they do sell in the US. So there were some foreign exchange uh, adjustments there. So it should actually be uh, up uh, if there wasn't those foreign foreign exchange adjustments as the Canadian dollar has been rising. So adjusted EBITDA, the company's just, uh, just accomplished its first year of adjusted EBITDA profits. They've now got about five quarters of uh, adjusted EBITDA profits. And while uh, the net income for the full year was negative, uh, they've shown uh, their first quarter of uh, you know, net profitability in Q3 2020. Um, a little bit of an asterisk again for the net profits for the year. The company just had a one-time write-down uh, or sort of impair, not write-down, an impairment on their, um, their software technology costs. So they're actually capitalizing their technology costs when they probably should have been expensing it. So the board and management thought it was a smart idea at uh, this juncture in time to um, you know, take that hit, which was about, uh, I think it was about $1.8 million. So they were, net, they were actually a net loss for the year. It was a non-cash sort of one-time expense. So why do I like the company? I think from a capital markets perspective, it's it's simple. So generally, if you know, a simple idea means a little bit faster and easier discovery. Uh, again, very simple, slap and track. You're selling a hardware product. Uh, the hardware product should hopefully lead to uh, increased recurring uh, software sales, which it is. 
IoT is a, a big theme. Uh, there's very large, uh, it's a very large market opportunity, big total addressable market. Uh, here in Canada, you know, a lot of the micro cap names, uh, IoT hasn't been sort of, uh, you know, been a big, big theme yet. So I think there's an opportunity there. Uh, there's definitely fundamental value. Uh, so, as, you know, the company's put up four consecutive years of high growth. They've had a strong recurring revenue profile with about $3 million in 12, uh, 3 million and 12 trillion month uh, recurring revenues. That number is actually up 43% year over year. Uh, and most importantly, I, I, the recurring revenues are now covering the operational costs. So the company is in a position to uh, not dilute. It's been cash profitable since Q1 of 2020. Uh, five consecutive quarters of adjusted EBITDA profits. Uh, Q4 that just uh, was reported. Again, another, another record quarter of adjusted EBITDA. Uh, right now, they're diversifying their customer base. So if they're growing customer base, uh, you're probably going to see a continuation of the, the, the growth and recurring revenue. Uh, the margins are improving. Um, and I'd like to highlight this because, uh, you know, as uh, the recurring revenue becomes a larger piece of the total overall sales, uh, the margins are going to uh, increase because of that, uh, you know, because again, the, the software recurring revenue is about 80 or 90% gross margin. Uh, insiders own about 32% of the company. Uh, they're still buying the stock. Uh, again, they've got a low overhead sort of growth strategy and they're, they're innovating. They're coming out with new products and hoping to penetrate some new markets. And uh, the Beware Mini is one of their new products that they're looking forward to uh, releasing here. Valuation, uh, company is trading at a price to sales or an enterprise value to sales of about 2.4, price to sales about 2.7, uh, enterprise value to recurring revenue. Again, the, the, the more important piece to me are sort of the meat and potatoes from an investor standpoint, I think, uh, about 5.5x. Um, again, there's not too many true peer comps here in Canada. Most of them are private uh, or in a bit of a different space. Uh, but generally, I'm finding a lot of the micro caps here in Canada are you know, there's a bit of a range between sort of a, a three to 10, uh, 10x on a recurring or ARR basis, uh, or sometimes even higher. So it's not cheap. It's not expensive. It's sort of somewhere in between. And I think if they can continue to grow, they're going to grow in that valuation. Uh, the enterprise value to adjusted EBITDA is quite high, but, you know, as a software as a service business, that's just become profitable. Um, it's kind of expected to be a little bit higher than normal. Uh, book value of about 4 million bucks. Company's got about 2.4 million in cash and I think about $4 million in working capital. Uh, right now, the company, I believe, is uh, undiscovered. Uh, you know, it's pretty thinly traded. Um, you know, there's not many blog posts. You know, there's no Seeking Alpha articles. Uh, you know, it's profiled on a, you know, micro cap club and a few other little, um, you know, micro cap, uh, you know, investor centric places like that, you know, predominantly sort of sophisticated retail investors. Uh, the company's not doing any marketing. There's no investor uh, investor relations. If you chat with the company, they do get uh, the odd investor calling every now and then. So pretty minimal outreach. Uh, and they do have low institutional ownership, uh, sort of non-traditional institutional ownership in the sense it's not a fund that's looking to generate a return. I'm sure Bell Mobility is trying to generate a return too, but they're more of a partner. Uh, so Bell Mobility is a large telecom here in Canada. Uh, so just a bit of an overview, a bit of a snapshot, current price trading about 22 cents, 52 week high, uh, low is about 11 to 38. So good, good little range there. Issued note standing about 88 million shares. There's about 11, 11.6 million warrants. Uh, those all expire in, I think, 2024. Fully diluted, there's about 102 million shares out uh, or about a $20 million market cap. Again, the insiders, 32%, 12 trillion month revenue, about 7 million. Uh, 12 trillion month net loss, about uh, just under $2 million. And then the 12 trillion month EBITDA, about $365,000 and cash of 2.46, no debt and working capital 3.68 million. Always like to highlight the last financing, which was done in 2019 at 19 cents as a unit offering for about $4 million. And that would have been the round that Bell was placed at. So that's Beware uh, in a nutshell. And uh, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to, to go for it. Trevor, I might just kick off with one or two questions. Um, all these partnerships, are they just operating in the US Canadian markets? Or, you know, are they, you know, would you find their products, um, you know, in Europe or Australia? Or where are they operating geographically? 
Yeah, so geographically, I mean, well, they're, they're based out of Canada, but the majority of their sales are in the States. Uh, they're not really selling internationally. It's, it's, it's US and Canada is their, is their two core markets. Okay, and then, yeah, if we just go back to the founders, I mean, they've, sounds like they've bought and sold businesses, be, or maybe I won't say bought and sold, but they've founded and sold businesses in the past. Do you think that's their long-term play here is to, you know, um, I guess, get the band back together and, and redo the story again where they build it up and they sell it to either a Bell Mobility or to, you know, a bigger um, telematics company down the line? Or do you think they want to really, you know, build something really big themselves this time, the second time around? Well, I mean, in conversations with Owen, I think that was kind of his challenge with his last one. Um, you, you know, the last company was sold for about $40 million. Uh, I think it was a great exit for him and his investors. And I think they were operating in a smaller market or smaller opportunity market. And I think, you know, he, he did a fantastic job executing there and growing that business for a decade or so. Um, I do think that I'm not going to say they're going to be bought out or anything you know, like that. But I, I do think that's part of the roadmap or the strategy is to just focus on the business and they've got themselves into a profitable position now where they can continue to grow and uh, continue to penetrate that that market. And I think, you know, if an opportunity for, for a sale came, they would definitely take it. Uh, and I do think that's part of the roadmap for, for Owen. You know, he's expressed that in conversations we've had where, again, they're just trying to grow a revenue, uh, grow the business in, in this market and be a player in the market. And, you know, if some type of opportunity like that comes, I, I do think that they would take a sale. Um, so, so I, I think it's in the roadmap. I think it's too early. I think he's deaf, you know, he's young, he's got a lot of energy. Um, yeah. He's trying to grow the business and, you know, he's got a pretty vested position with him and his team. So uh, it's a tight knit group. Like it's kind of a, almost a bit of a family, Sam sort of like a family feel to it. Um, given that there's, you know, some pretty, um, you know, deep-seated roots in the telematic space. These guys have been around that industry for a while. Okay. And then another one, I mean, you know, you've got the hardware sales, which are leading the software sales. You know, if they were to see a big ramp up in hardware sales as, you know, the economy kind of opens back up down in the U.S., do you think they've got the, the, the balance sheet and the working capital to, to, to manage, you know, a, a a big uptick in demand or do you think they'd have to raise capital in order to kind of you know fund that first piece to, to kind of get the second piece is that a risk do you think well i mean capital raise is always a risk if there's a big enough order like if you get a you know a big big order i mean it you know could even make sense to do something like that but um you know as far as sort of the discussion and sort of our analysis on the business was the reason we started, you know, buying the stock when we did was because we believe that dilution risk is off the table now that they've got that recurring piece kind of covering uh, the recurring revenue is really covering all their operational costs and more. So the company now is cash flow profitable. So they are in a position now to, to be patient and sort of wait for the right opportunity. Um, so like I, I personally don't see any sort of dilutive risk at, at these levels right now. Um, you know, management is cognizant of dilution. Uh, again, Owen's previous business, uh, I think his biggest complaint with it, not complaint, but um, when it was sold, he was diluted down to such a, a minimal level that I think he's very cognizant of uh, insider ownership, um, you know, sort of on this, on this go around. So again, I, I think the, the, the business is now at a, an inflection point where that dilution risk is off the table. Um, and of course, you know, unless it's uh, accretive in, 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 in some sense. So, um, that, that's kind of core to the thesis here is, uh, they've, they've reached that inflection point where they don't need to dilute. So. Okay. And then, a, a final one for me, I don't know if you mentioned your presentation, maybe I just uh, missed it, but you know, the product obviously given its size and, um, non-power requirement, you can use it in so many different places, but have they called out, you know, particular industry verticals or sectors that they, you know, really want to stake a claim in, be it logistics or agriculture or healthcare, or is it, is it more just led by, you know, Bell and all of their other kind of partners that, that they just go where their partners are, are operating in? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's obviously some low hanging fruit, like they, they've been able to penetrate the trucking industry. Um, they've been focused, you know, quite a bit on sort of the, the medical side. So you think about, you know, stretchers or little things like that around a, a hospital. So they're, they're putting on beacons on a number of the different sort of movable assets. Um, but predominantly, it's going to be ultimately where where those resellers are focused, right? So the larger the resellers push, you know, the more the resellers kind of push the product in different uh, industries and different verticals, I think they're just, you know, they're going to continue taking orders wherever. But uh, again, sort of the bread and butter for this business was the trucking industry to start. I don't think that they're specifically targeting any industry to my knowledge. Um, I think it's just taking orders where anybody wants to buy product, right? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just checking here. Have we got any questions from the audience doesn't look like we have okay well we're a little ahead of time which is always better than being late and um, so i think after four hours and eight presentations for anybody and i i think actually a few attendees have sat through the whole the whole summit so thank you very much for uh, everyone who had attended and especially anyone who's sat through for the whole thing and i want to thank all our presenters uh, and at least Trevor, who uh, has got out of bed early to uh, to join us from Vancouver. Uh, and then I think we've saved the best for last, as they say. Uh, Trevor, thank you very much. Thanks to, I can see Dave, Jeremy, Luke and, and Marcus are still on here. Thank you guys for your respective presentations. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. And hopefully it'll be the, the, first, uh, the first of many. As I say, I think it was in my opening remarks, I think it's the first global microcap uh, investor summit or conference that at least I'm aware of and I'm up in the direction of somebody else has done something like this in the past but um, yeah it was a lot of fun and uh, hopefully we can do one uh, in a couple of months time again yeah thanks Mark appreciate it, it was a great opportunity and I uh, love what you're doing here cheers thanks Trevor yeah, thanks everyone have a good rest of your day evening morning wherever you're dialing in from yeah, thanks everyone Bye.